Hello, everyone. Here we go again with some news you can use. Uh, let me see here. Let me open the... There we go. Okay. So we're going to start with the uh, World Health Organization. And I will leave this link below. I'm not going to read it all. But um, the World Health Organization has a list uh, and guidelines for wheelchair provision. So these are like suggestions on, you know, recommendations for types of wheelchairs and the appropriate use, et cetera, et cetera, for all kinds of ages, children, older persons, people with mobility disabilities, and those with chronic health conditions. So um, it would be an interesting list for you all to take a look at. Um, I, in the past, have mentioned, you know, using a wheelchair, the pros and cons. So um, this list, I'm sure, will include that, the type of wheelchair that you're looking at, but also the terrain and where you live, you know, so that, you know, you if you get a wheelchair that you can get parts for it, that it is uh, appropriate for the type of terrain you have to handle, if you're going to use it indoors, outdoors, or just indoors, you know, all of that, it's not easy to pick out a wheelchair that's going to fit your needs. So I will leave that link so you can take a look at what the World Health uh, Organization recommends in regards to uh, wheelchairs. Uh, then uh, we all know that Medicare, Medicaid, which are insurance programs here in the United States, uh, they just approved uh, elevating uh, wheelchairs. And I think back in 2008, 2006, they uh, Medicare, Medicaid had received some recommendations for elevating wheelchairs. However, I think that as I look at the document, the wording wasn't appropriate. So they were just recommending these elevating wheelchairs for reaching items and talking to people, being at the same level as a person who was standing. And for Medicare, that wasn't enough. You know, it's like why, you know, that's more of a accessory. It's more of a um, more of a wish rather than a medical need. So I think this time around when they Medicare had been hearing more and more about the need for elevating uh, wheelchairs and for standing wheelchairs, so I think this time around, they opened the forum and people put in their thoughts and their opinions, uh, and that helped Medicare understand exactly why people were really looking towards the elevating wheelchairs, which was to help them transfer from you know, their wheelchairs to, uh, to bed, uh, to be able to reach things in the home. And these are all necessary daily daily actions in 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 daily living so this is not a luxury just to elevate to be able to talk to someone who is standing but to be able to do simple functions like get in the top section of the refrigerator which i can't do when i'm in my wheelchair and to kind of try to force myself to hang on to something like a monkey and try to reach something in the fridge is a little precarious, so um, I think that I think Medicare finally got it, and it was worded much better, I think, from us and a few organizations that said, "Hey, you know, um, the the wheelchair is not always at the height of the bed, and then the the client ends up having to purchase a bed because uh, an elevating uh, bed." to be able to get in and out and get in and out of other uh, furniture to be able to shift their weight uh, and avoid pressure sores, so all of that and some of that, um, it, the wording is critical. So if you're going to ask for something new from Medicare, it has to be worded in a way that's going to benefit the, the daily actions and daily needs of, of the patient. So now that has happened, and so they are working on the costs of the elevating uh, wheelchairs, um, and also Medicare is also looking into the standing 
type wheelchairs, which we know medically could be a huge benefit uh, in terms of health, uh, all around health, uh, not just to, oh, look, I'm standing. <laughs> no, it has to do with a whole lot more than that because um, our circulation and uh, switching, our, switching off and on our, our pressure in different parts of the body. So Medicare gets it. Uh, so they are working on the cost and how to add all this in to uh, the CMS, which is the uh, database that Medicare uses. So they are working on that right now, and I'll read a few uh, paragraphs here, and I will post the link down below. In 2006, CMS had rejected a Johnson & Johnson request for coverage of the iBot wheelchair priced at $26,100. The device could lift people to standing height and also climb stairs and curbs. In making its request for Medicare coverage, J&J &J had argued that the device had significant advantages over manual wheelchairs, power wheelchairs, and power scooters, and already uh, scooters already covered by Medicare which limited people to sticking with relatively flat, smooth surfaces. Uh, by permitting the user to negotiate uh, variable surfaces, climb curbs and stairs, and balance at a standing eye level position, whether at rest or in motion, the iBot mobility uh, system virtually neutralizes access barriers in the home as well as the community, J and J said in its request. So it's really, again, it's critical when you're asking an insurance company to cover X Y Z. You really need to look at the health benefits because that's a language they understand. So J and J won uh, pre-market approval in 2003 from the Food and Drug Administration for the device, meaning it had cleared the highest regulatory hurdles for devices, but the company knew the request for Medicare coverage would be a tough sell at CMS. So truly, um, <laughs> so you really have to know how is this gonna benefit uh, the daily functions uh, and daily living tasks for people and how is it going to impact their health? So you have to be able to speak the language the insurance speaks. So, uh, so this is uh, really critical. You know, Medicare is working on this right now and trying to get a fair price so they can they can cover it for you and for me, and so that uh, they can also cover it. So. Um, so this is, this is a, a news that I presented uh, some time ago, and they're still working on it, and they're still you know, working out the kinks and the cost and all that kind of stuff so it, they can cover it, you know, we can cover it, and, and get the benefits we need from uh, the elevating wheelchairs and the standing wheelchairs, because uh, Medicare is working on that right now too. So I will leave the link of this article down below so you can read it. Spectrum One News. Um, this is a very cute article about uh, an important one. Uh, th this is a child who has muscle dystrophy and is a very strong advocate for uh, um, a program uh, for schooling, homeschooling online. And uh, he was so cute in the article, and you can in the article and in the little video clip that they did of him. So uh, this is uh, about uh, inclusivity in education. Uh, this came from again Spectrum One News, and it was written by let me get her name here, Sarah Redlang in North Carolina, published on June 4th, 2023. While many kids are excited for summer fun in the sun, research shows that elementary school students on average lose nearly 40% of their school year gains during the summer break. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so 10-year-old uh, Harrison Gaddis of Durham 
is a big advocate for accessibility and inclusion for people with all abilities in schools. Harrison has muscular dystrophy and other conditions that can make learning tough due to his wheelchair, oxygen, and meals via uh, G-Tube. The Geddes family uses an online learning platform called OutSchool to supplement both Harrison's homeschooling and his twin sister and older brother's in-person schooling. So um, this is really an article uh, that talks about accessibility, but it also talks about OutSchool and how cool it is. So yes, I do agree, especially those uh, people who have, and this is a program that covers age three all the way to 18. So, you know, some, some kids have a, a rough time, have to be in the hospital, have to have surgery, the recovery time, all that kind of stuff. And the public school system, sometimes even private schools, have a hard time accommodating or figuring out how to help the child continue to learn during their health struggles. So I will I'll put this in so you can read about this if you're a parent with a child uh, with disabilities, this uh, might be for you. Uh, I don't know how far and wide out school uh, goes, but it, it might uh, be helpful for you. Uh, Middletown School Animal Ambassador Program aids students with emotional challenges. And this one is very familiar to us. We know the benefits the animals have, whether it's a cat or a dog or bird, fish. <laughs> so although the fish can't really talk to us <laughs> or sit or lie down. But, um, you know, uh, we do know that uh, a lot of schools have implemented uh, social support uh, animals, and it is a great benefit, especially for those who struggle with disabilities and emotions. So this article comes from Middletown Press, and doesn't give me an author. Oh, there it is. So this was written by Gary Klee, Klee Blatt, uh, and he is a correspondent. So I will leave that article about this uh, uh, doggy who supports kids in the school with uh, disabilities. I don't know if any of you are into this. You know, it's uh, mind-boggling <laughs> to me, but this might be an article that you're interested in. This is uh, Electric Wheelchair Market for 2023. Uh, a lot of you or some of you might be interested in numbers and where uh, certain um, manufacturers are going, uh, forecasted into 2029. Uh, so there, are, I get these uh, reports every so often. So I will post that link so you can uh, enjoy the article. <laughs> it's a lot about statistics and numbers and costs uh, throughout the world, uh, not just in the United States or Europe. So it's, it's throughout. And what companies are getting ahead in the market, what companies are first, second, third. So uh, that might be of interest to some of you. So I will post that uh, link as well. Also, I don't want to forget uh, to let all of you know that um, some of you might have not seen the, the video that I put out recently, but Delta in the UK it has developed a, a section in their airplanes for wheelchair users to just drive on and be locked down. Now, it's not completely done yet. They're going to go to an exhibit uh, and show it off. I think they earned an award uh, uh, for last year. Uh, so this is happening. So it is Delta that's taken the, the lead on making sure that they have a section on their airplane for wheelchair users to drive on uh, to the plane and lock themselves down. So this is great news for all of us. I don't want anybody to miss this. In the United States, we're still uh, working towards legislation and rules and regulations for it. Uh, and some universities are involved now to design and to offer a model for, uh, to address this need. So I will keep posting you on how all this develops 
But the good news is Delta in the UK uh, developing the first model uh, for wheelchair users to be uh, able to just drive on directly to the airplane and be locked down. So just wanted to put that in there and see you in the next one. Thank you.